the tenth night of Rabi' and al Awal, the year 1440, uh, 1441, after the migration of our Prophet, which coincides with Wednesday, November the 6th, 2019, on the Gregorian calendar, 6.53 p.m., which inshallah bi we could try to start class around this time due to the fact that I think Maghrib now comes in approximately hmm, 4.50, 4.50 p.m. And I think we usually people don't finish praying until about 5.15, 5.20. I think the time is still a little bit early due to the fact they put the hour back. And I think, like we said, we'll keep the time here. To, to the fact we'll stop, we'll start directly at the Isha because it's going to get earlier than that. It's going to get a little bit more earlier. Salat al Isha probably coming about now. What might come about around six o'clock? What time? What time is it coming now? Six twelve. It's going to go back further than that. To maybe almost about five fifty. So we'll keep it at the Isha, inshallah. So I think that would be an appropriate time for everyone. Taib, as we continue, we continue Kitab Tawheed. As we're still in the chapter, Bad Maja'a fil Kuhan wa Nahwihim. The chapter which comes in those who claim to have knowledge of the unseen of the of the the ilm of those who claim to have knowledge of the unseen from the crystal ball readers, and those who claim to have knowledge of the unseen, which is all tied in with magic. Pick up your pen. Sit up straight. Put your chair close to the table. Mm-hmm. So as we continue in the narration, as we were discussing from last class, on the authority of Imran ibn Hussein, we said that this narration is marfu'r. It's marfu'r. And this is what we discussed from last class. So we said that the narration, is, as it says, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ تَطَيَّرَ أَوْ تَطَيَّرَ لَهُ that he is not from us the one who asks for an omen to be performed for him. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. He is not from us the one, man tatayyara, the one who performs the omen. I'm sorry. The one who performs the omen or the evil omen. And the one who it's being done for. The one who it's being done for. So you'll find, Ya Ma'ish al Ikhwa. Here in this narration, Tatayara, you'll find that the person himself used to gather birds and he would release them during the time of the Arab Suhail, pay attention, during the time of the Arab in Jahiliyyah, in the time of ignorance before the, the advent of our Prophet, والسلام, that the people used to go to certain individuals and ask them to gather the birds and release them for them, to see which direction they would fly in to see whether or not the circumstances of their life would be beneficial or would it be detrimental or if something good would occur or something bad would occur. They would go to certain individuals and ask them to release the birds or restrain the birds, performing an, an omen for them, whether it be bad, whether it be evil or good. Well, all of it is evil in, at the end of the day. But in their perception, either whether it be something of a good omen for them or an evil omen for them. But uh, the one who actually will gather the birds and release it, that is the one who's performing the omen. And that's what the hadith is speaking about. The one who actually releases the birds or the one that does anything that's pertaining to so-called performing an evil omen for another, for another person. It doesn't matter whether it's the birds or whether it's something else used depending on what are the myths and the superstitions of different places or different countries. As an omen could be performed in another way. It could be utilization of rocks or it could be utilizations of, of seashells from the sea, what is extracted from the sea. And they will ask an individual who maybe they, can, they think that they are a person that's proficient in this type of action, take the seashells and throw them in the ground and read them and determine whether or not my life will be 
beneficial or something in my life that will happen, what is beneficial or something evil based upon you throwing those seashells on the ground or what have you. So, so this hadith, if you look in your books, everyone, what is intended is not just merely the omen with the birds. Rather, anything that is pertaining to that. And that same concept where it is utilized to determine whether or not something of the unseen, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of only, that that person utilizes this in order to determine whether or not, whether or not something beneficial or evil will happen in someone so's life or in a specific person's life. So that's the reason why the Prophet ﷺ, clear in this narration, set himself free from the one who performs the omen for other people. Whether or not they be birds or other than the birds. Whether it be fish, whether it be rocks, whether it be sticks, whether it be seashells from the sea, or what have you. doesn't matter. If a person performs an omen for another person, this falls under what we're speaking about now. As you'll find at the great Imam Ibn Fawzan, Hafizullah he even mentions it says, At-tatayr wa tasha'um bil-mar'i aw al-masmu' aw al-ma'lum aw ghayri dhalik wa asluhu min at-tayr liyana al-arab kanu yatasha'amun aw yatafa'alun biha wa qad sabaqa dhalik He said, At-tatayr its origin was extracted from at-tasha'um At-tasha'um meaning what you deem to be an evil omen from something that is seen or heard or known or other than that. He says the word tatayr come is originally comes from the word tayr. Tayr. Ta ra ya. Tayr. Tayr in the Arabic language means bird. Tayr. Or tuyur. Or tayr. Or tayr means bird in Arabic. Tayr. And the plural is tuyur. Tuyur. طيب, the Arab, as he says, the great Imam, he said that they used to deem certain affairs to be bad omens or good ones based upon utilizing the birds. He said, from what used to take place for certain people, if the person would perform it for them, that ثم حصل الله في أوله تعثر وتركه وتشائم. He said, for what would take place for certain people that they would carry out a certain action, meaning they want to go about and performing something in their life, what was beneficial, whether it be religious or whether it be in their worldly matters or in their job, they would go out and set out to do something. He said, ثُمَّ حَصَلَ اللَّهُ فِي أَوَّلِهِ تَعَثُّرْ تَرَكَهُ وَتَشَاءً He said, then they will have some type of religion, some type, excuse me, some type of superstitions or myths that some type of mishap would take place where when they set out to do it, something went and came in the way, or something superstitious. Then as a result of it, they'll just leave it off. They will just what? Abandon that action or that beneficial affair they were embarking upon. They will what? Leave it off. All that must mean is this, based upon the fact this happened or this happened, they will what? deem it to be evil, evil omen, and they will what? Leave it off. He said, this is not permissible due to the fact that the religion of Islam and what the message of Allah Sallallahu came with, he eradicated all these different types of false ideologies and false beliefs and false concepts and convictions. Rather, the message of Allah came and he tied the people's hearts with Allah, teaching them to put their trust in Allah. To put their trust in Allah to be with the Alan, to rely upon Him, Subhanahu Jalla fil Ula. And as long as the affair is like what we're saying, then it's coming upon you, and this matter that you're embarking upon, no doubt, have some type of good that you firmly believe that, inshallah, that will come as a result of you carrying out this affair. He said, Go out, set out within it. في لأول مرة فكم الإنسان لم يوفق في العمل أول مرة ثم وفق في ثاني مرة أو ثالث مرة. He said because something you want to embark upon of good in your life, he says set out to do it. فغامر في set out to do it. And don't believe in those superstitions or myths or omens that will control how you will conduct in these matters. 
Because he says in the first time, maybe perhaps Allah will not, might not give you success in it. Lam tuwaffaq. In the first time you do it. He said, how many people have not received tawfiq, success from Allah in a certain action in the first time? Then they tried again. Then Allah gave them tawfiq in it. Then they tried again or a third time and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them success in it. And that's in anything, whether it be marriage, whether it be in a job. Because you'll find that certain people out there, they will say, oh, I did it right and I still didn't get the results I wanted. So that means you have to resort to haram now. Oh, I got married the right way. I wasn't on the phone with the person. I wasn't texting. We weren't dating. We didn't do anything before the marriage. And, and it still ended up in divorce. Tayyip, did you ever see the tawfiq the first time? Try again. Keep doing it the, the second time. Oh, I, I filled out job applications. I want to sell drugs. I'm going to go out and now try to uh, live a fast life due to the fact I tried the lawful life, the correct life, the straight law. I tried that. And all I had in the end was bad results. Tayyip, receive receive. You didn't receive tawfiq the first time, keep trying. Keep trying again. Keep doing it the right way again and again until you get it right. So these are the reasons why I'm coming with these examples because a lot of people think that. They think that these narrations or these type of uh, narrations that we're covering now, they don't know how to apply it. They don't know how to apply it. That's why I'm giving these different types of examples. Because you'll find a lot of our people, they say, I did it right the first time and I didn't get the results I wanted. Or I didn't attain the results I wanted. So that means you're just going to switch and now resort to haram. And that's a trick from shaitan that he does to a lot of people. You might not have received tawfiq in the first time you did it, but, but now when you did it the second time, or maybe the, perhaps the third time, or it might even take fourth or the fifth. The most important thing is that you set out to do it and do not believe in these superstitions and myths. And don't give in to the whispers of shaitan telling you to give up what is done correctly. You'll find a lot of people do that. They'll give up and they say, oh, I did that right, so I'll just resort to what's impermissible and what angers my Lord. Due to the fact that I tried what Allah had commanded me and I did not get the results I wanted. And we say, try again. And try again the correct way. Try again the correct way. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you tawfiq. Tayyip. And this happens to a lot of us. A lot of us, whether it be in ilm, whether it be in a student of knowledge, and you'll find that a lot of people these days, you know, it doesn't matter what the affair is. Maybe perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of you being a student, maybe you weren't as studious. Then as time progressed, as you learn, and you, and you try, after trial and error, and you continue to try, and continue to try, and continue to try, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? opened up the affair and facilitated it for you. That's in any affair, whether it be in, in, your, in your worldly affairs, or whether it be in a religion, or whether it be in knowledge of the religion itself, or being a student of knowledge, whatever affair it is, or marriage, or whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. doesn't matter. Try and do not, especially do not rely on these myths and superstitions in which you'll find they used to control the people, where they would embark upon something good and they would leave it off if they so-called some type of mishap or as they say a misfortune takes place and as a result of it they would abandon that particular beneficial act or affair that might have what benefited them in their life. So this is the first type of narration as it says here, Ya Ma'ash al Was it goes on in much as it mentions Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Ibn al Qayyim, that he goes on and mentions it says, Manishtahara bi ihsan al Zajri indahum. He says, for a person, oh, I'm sorry, everyone. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. The Prophet said, Laysa minna, he is not from us. And we know that from those type of wordings that the Message of Allah used, when he says that a person is not from us, it can necessitate what everyone? It could necessitate number one, the origin. Is that negating one's Islam or the completeness of faith? Or the completeness of faith? Depends. Depends. We know that these type of affairs, number one, is polytheism. 
It's polytheism, no doubt. However, if the person has the i'tiqad, has the belief, what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, he is not from us. Here, these affairs are talking about what? Superstitions, oaths. The, all these affairs are affairs of polytheism, no doubt. If the person that's performing the omen, is performing the omen, if he has the belief that these omens have full power and control over someone or over this world in totality, without it being any type of what? Power from Allah to be with the Allah. That's major polytheism. We'll nullify Islam. We'll take you out and remove you out of the fold of Islam. However, if you think it's just an act, however, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for one believes that He ultimately is the one that administrates the affairs of this world, whether it be in our lives specifically or generally in the mundane or current events that takes place in this world, then it's considered minor polytheism if the person especially is ignorant. We don't say that a person is quickly to be what? A kafir. But however, we say that these acts are acts of what? Of shirk. And no doubt that they're acts of kufr. So the Prophet ﷺ said here, he is not from us. Well, you'll find that Ahl Ilm that they mention this regard, especially uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Hassan Ali Sheikh, that he mentions in this context that he says, فيه وعيد شديد يدل على أنه هذه على أن هذه الأمور من الكبائر وتقدم أن الكهانة والسحر كفر. When the Prophet Sallallahu said, "He is not from us," he said, "In it is severe is a severe warning." It indicates that these matters are from the kabair. They're from the major sins. They're from the major sins. And as already preceded, that kahana and sihr is kufr. It's already preceded, meaning we already mentioned that claiming to have knowledge of the unseen or predictions and magic is disbelief, is kufr. However, there are certain narrations that we know that's tied in with major sins, such as the Prophet ﷺ said, "Laysa minna man yghish or man man ghasha falaysa minna." Excuse me, man ghasha falaysa minna. Whoever cheats, he is not from us. Whoever cheats, he is not from us. So you find that these narrations, the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned, it said, "Whoever cheats, he is not from us." And there's a lot of narrations where he sets himself. Free from the one that does particular acts. Where the origin of it is, that is a major warning for one not to commit these acts where the message of Allah clearly set himself free from the one who does it. So you find that it says, He is not from us. The one who performs a tatayyar. Meaning that the person, of course, that actually does it for someone else. That person, like we said, the message of Allah والسلام, clearly freed himself from that individual. From the person, like we said, and it's not just particularized by the birds, whatever superstition or myth that it may be, whether birds are utilized. Or seashells or sticks, rocks, it doesn't matter. If a person gathers these matters or, or utilizes these matters in order to predict something of occurring in someone's life, and, and that person goes to you and they ask you to perform an omen or superstition for them, then the Messenger of Allah, like we said, clearly freed himself from. This individual. So do not think, yeah, Ma'ashal Ikhwah, what is mentioned in this narration here is only, partic- is only specifically or restricted to usage of the birds. Anything that this matter is what? Utilized for, whether it be birds or other than the birds. Like we said, 
whether it be rocks, whether it be sticks, whether it be cups, whether it be uh, seashells from the sea or wherever it, whatever it may be. For verily, if it's pertaining to someone predicting or trying to claim to have knowledge of the unseen, then we said it falls under this warning that the message of Allah mentioned. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Is it clear what I'm saying? Tayyip. You'll find that the great Imam that he goes on to say, فَكُلَّ مَنْ تَلَقَّى هَذِهِ الْأُمُورِ عَمَّنْ تَعَاطَاهَا فَقَدْ بَرِئَ مِنْهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم لِكَوْنِهَا إِمَّا شِرْكَ كَالطِيَرَةِ أَوْ كُفْرًا كَالْكَهَانَةِ وَالسِّحْرِ فَمَنْ رَضِيَ بِذَلِكَ وَتَابَعَ عَلَيْهِ فَهُوَ كَالْفَاعِلِ لِقَبُولِهِ الْبَاطِلِ وَاتِّبَاعِهِ For anyone who now that he takes these affairs, meaning he receives some type of belief in, in regards to some benefit from the one who actually partakes in this, meaning from the individual that goes to the person and asks him to do it. That person that asks him, he's taking some news from what? That person is predicting. He says the message of Allah, so he said, not only freed himself from the one that does it, but even the one that's asking to have it done. Or going to the person that's actually what? Doing it for him. So he freed himself from both individuals. He said, for, for, he said due to the fact that it being either polytheism, either shirk, he says such as qiyara, omens with the birds, or disbelief, such as kahana, such as predictions, or or professing or one acknowledging that he has or her has knowledge of the unseen or magic so the one who's pleased with that and they follow him upon that then he is like the one that actually did the prediction because you're pleased when you go to the person that means you're basically believing in them when you're going to the person asking them to do or set the birds free for me I want to know what's going to happen in my day today. Set the birds or release them in the air. See which direction they will what? Fly in. You ask them, that means you're now as if you're saying what? You have knowledge of the unseen. And or you have some type of what? News from the shayateen. <laughs> or it in its origin being what? Polytheism. Polytheism. Notice that the great Imam was very diqiq. He was very, very accurate what he says. And I want everyone to listen to this. He said either it being polytheism, such as the practice of omens with the birds, or it being disbelief, such as one claiming to have knowledge of the unseen or magic. How is he separating between the two? Due to the fact that the person who did you go, that the person who you go to and ask them to perform this act for you, might not be the fact that he claims to have knowledge of the unseen. But he'll just release the birds for you. This will go to this direction or that direction. Even though the person might not, let's just say, I don't have knowledge of the unseen. But based upon what, what usually happens with the birds going this way or that way, this means that, the, that if the birds fly in the east, something good is in your life is going to happen. If it flies to the west, something evil or something good or beneficial will happen. Tayyip. That particular person that set the birds or released them might not have knowledge of the unseen. Let's just say he just says, I'm just doing it because that's something that I do and this is what I was taught. It doesn't matter. It's still considered an act of what? Polytheism. So whether or not a person claims that he says, well, for example, I might, he might exonerate himself and say, I don't have knowledge of the unseen. But based upon what I was taught, I released these birds for people because they want to know what happens or what's going to happen of something beneficial for them or not. I release it for them, and, be, and based upon what direction they go, I tell them. You ask them, do you have knowledge of the unseen? No. I release the birds, and then I tell them, based upon what direction they go in, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. doesn't matter. Whether you claim to have knowledge of the unseen, we see that this affair is considered what? A polytheistic act. It's still an act of what? Polytheism. Now, if he claims to have knowledge of the unseen... It says, okay, yes, I do have knowledge of the unseen. Rather, the birds flying this way 
means that such and such definitely is going to take place of such and such events in this specific way and in this certain time and in this certain place, but, 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 but to the end of it. If he does this, now he has taken up, and he's raised the level of evil up a notch. Not only does he gather between shirk, he's also gathered between to have knowledge of the affairs of the unseen. Where we talked about brothers, where a person claims to have knowledge of the unseen, you are embarking upon transgressing the levels of rububi of Allah. You're transgressing on, in the levels and the boundaries of the lordship of Allah. You understand what I'm saying, everyone? Like we said, knowledge of the unseen is pertaining to the rububi of Allah, the lordship of Allah. The lordship of Allah, ta'ala, where those affairs are very sacred, and a person now to share or claim that he shares in Allah, and those type of affairs are the most uglified and vilified of what? Of affairs, and the most hideous. To say that you share in the knowledge of Allah in affairs that's pertaining to the unseen are the most hideous and most evil of acts. Because now you are journeying, journeying off in the realm of what, everyone? Of the rububi of Allah, ta'ala. Is it clear what I'm saying? Tayyib. So notice that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned and said, the one who acts to have it done, or the one who does it, and the one who acts to have it done, and the one who predicts, and the one who acts to have that prediction done for him. Or the one who practices magic, and the one who acts for them to perform magic for them. Prophet Sallallahu set himself free from what? All these people. So all these people have what? Attained some type of what? Portion of what the message of Allah mentioned in this narration. So all these affairs are very what? Very dangerous. The great Imam as he goes on to say, سَبَقَ أَنَ الْكَهَانَ إِدْدِعَاءُ عِلْمِ الْغَيْبِ فِي الْمُسْتَقْبَلِ يَقُوسَ يَكُونُ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَرُبَّمَا يَقَعْ فَهَذَا مُتَكَهِّنْ ومن الغريب أنه شاع الآن في أسوب الناس قولهم تكهنا بأن فلان سيأتي ويطلقون هذا اللفظ الدال على عمل محرم على أمر مباح وهذا لا ينبغي يان العام الذي لا يفرق بين الأمور يظن أن الكهانة كلها مباحة بدليل إطلاق, إطلاق هذا اللفظ على شيء مباح معلوم إباحته طيب he says that the word takahana or tukuhinala, he said that we, it's already preceded that the word kahana in predictions is the one who claims to have knowledge of the unseen in the future. That such and such is going to take place. Maybe perhaps it will take place. This person is called mutakahin, the one who predicts. He said, what is strange now, you'll find that what is spread out from amongst the people from their ways that they say, their statements such as, He predicted that so-and-so was going to come. They said they use this, this type of wording, when, which is an indication of an unlawful act. And utilize it for something that is so-called natural. He said this is not befitting. Because the common folk do not differentiate between affairs in which they so-called think that a prediction in their minds they think that all of it is what? all of it is something natural and that that is nothing wrong with it he said basically he's warning against the usage of this type of wording which is so and so predicted that's what he's warning against that's what he's warning against the actual wording should not be used the actual wording so and so predicted should not be used Someone so predicted that such and such is coming. He predicted such and such is going to happen. He predicted or she predicted. The word should not be what? It should not be used. Huh? The word takahana means to predict. Someone so predicted the word should not be used. He said, la yimbari. It's not befitting. That, oh, he predicted the future. Or he predicted such and such is going to happen. Or he predicted so and so is going to come. Or such and such is going to take place. He said the problem is the wording. Especially it should not be used amongst the common folk who do not differentiate between affairs in which he or she might think that this type of wording 
All of it is what? Something natural. There's nothing wrong with it. You'll find people that do not have this distinction. So they'll think that when they use this word, there's nothing wrong with it. Someone so predicted such and such. He says, so it's not befitting that one use this type of what? This type of wording. He said, طَلَبَ مِنْ الْكَاهِ أَنْ يَتَكَهَّنَ لَهُ To the end of it. We already just mentioned that. طيب. So the wording should not be what? Should not be used. And that's what we're speaking about right now. Then it says in the last part, if you look at it, everyone, the one who performs magic or has magic done for him. So it's not just enough that a person would say that, for example, oh, the person that performs magic, of course, that's clear. But a person that acts to have it performed and acts for it to be done also falls under the what? The warning. In which the message of Allah, cover your mouth. In which the message of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, what? Warned against. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Is it clear what I'm saying? Type. So it says clear in the narration, all these people who the message of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, that he warned against all these people partaking in these matters, whether it be the person actually doing it, or the one that's seeking to have it done. All of them fall in the portion of the sin, if they're not careful. طيب. So now we move on. As it says, رواه البزار قال بغوي إلى آخره. What's it saying at the end? Now, so if we go back to the books, everyone, it says, it was narrated by al Tabarani in his Awsat, and it's within a sound chain or a good chain on the authority of, or from the hadith of Ibn Abbas. دون قوله ومن أتى إلى آخره. الإمام البغوي said العراف الذي يدعي معرفة الأمور بمقدمات يستدل بها على المسروق ومكان الضالة ونحو ذلك. الإمام البغوي that we mention here if you look in your books how do they translate it everyone? says البغوي what did he say? You keep going. And they say that this is the patent. And the patent is the one who tells the hidden matters of the future. And they say he is the one who reads minds. Uh huh. Keep reading. Keep reading. Jay. Al Imam al Baghawi, he mentions it says that the meaning of Al Araf is the one who claims to have knowledge of affairs. Bi muqaddimat. Bimukadimat, meaning certain things that have taken place in which they tried to indicate of something that was stolen or something that was lost. Meaning that it already took place. Because something that's stolen is a clear indication that it already what happened. Or something that was lost is a clear indication that it already what? That happened already. This is what Shay Uthay made that he said in this regard. He says, "Ano who shamil li madda'a ma'rifat al-mustaqbal wal-maadi, li ano makal al-masruq yana ba'at al-sariqa, wa kadhalik al-dalla qad hasal al-dayaa, wa lakin al-masala leesat al-tifaqiyah bina al-ilm, wa li hada qal muallif rahimahullah wa qila huwa al-araf al-kahin wa al-kahin huwa al-ladhi yuxbiru an al-mughayyabat fi al-mustaqbal." We already mentioned this setup this last class. I don't want to review it again because I don't want everyone to get confused. We said there's a, a difference between Al-Araf and the Kahin if they've been mentioned in the same context. So I mentioned in class last week. So what I mentioned. If Kahin is mentioned, Al-Araf falls into it. If Al-Araf is mentioned by itself, then Kahin what? J. So they can mean both, depending on, like we said, the context of how it's used. But Imam al baghawi gave an example and said that the meaning is is what is comprehensive for a word or a person that claims to have knowledge of, of something in the future or even in the past. Because if something becomes stolen or lost, that means it happened in the what? In the past. Already happened. So now they're looking for it. So it already took place. 
similar to that is something that's lost or misplaced. Because now, due to the fact that it's lost, it means that's, that's a clear indication that it happened when? In the past. So that's what Imam al baghawi that he mentioned about the, the meaning of Al-Arraf. And we already talked about in the previous class the slight differences, even though both can be, be considered what? The same thing, depending on the context. They also say, if you look in your books, that a kahin is the one who informs about affairs of the unseen in the future, which is correct. And some of them say, for example, something in which a person informs of what is in the mind. Do they say that? Have they in your books? What does it say? Jayyid. The one who likewise will try to read the minds of the people. And he'll say, what, I've, what have I concealed in my mind? Read it. So what is going to take place in such and such what? Month or what have I had planned? Read my mind. Or when is my wife going to give birth? Or what's going to take place in such and such month? To the end of it. Will I die? Will my child be born? To the end of it. Everything that we've been covering, all these affairs are what? All these affairs fall under what we're talking about. They just give you a broad understanding of what is considered of affairs you'll find where people claim that they have some type of knowledge of the what? Of the unseen. Whether it be in the past, where they try to now, for example, try to say, such, it's in such and such place that you lost, this was stolen, or they have like a jinn, they have a jinn, go look for it for you, or what have you. There's a story that Shaykh al-Islam did mention in his book about the affairs pertaining to the jinn. About the affairs pertaining to the jinn. And how some of them were used, how some of them were used in order to look for certain things. But you'll find that Al-Ilm and say, especially in these days, this should not be done whatsoever due to the fact that you do not know whether or not the jinn is a person of evil or a person that truly is a believer. You do not know. Because nobody has affairs or knowledge of these matters whatsoever. But during the time of, especially during the time of Ibn al-Khattab, there were certain stories that did take place where the jinn was used in order to find certain people who were lost. And which you'll find that Ibn Uthaymin does mention in his explanation. But that which you'll find which the strongest opinion is, especially with the great imam, Shaykh Rabi'i Hafidhullah Ra'a where he said that the jinn should not be used for any of these affairs due to the fact that none of them know or you do not know what the jinn is it is it a believer or not or a person who is a kafir nobody knows you do not know what that jinn is and if you did that would mean that you have some type of knowledge of the unseen and nobody truly knows you do not know the only one who knows that their jinn became Muslim and truly knows the message of Allah. Which the message of Allah وسلم, has said, He says, وَمَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدْ إِلَّا وَلَهُ قَرِينَ قَالُوا حَتَّى أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ حَتَّى أَنَا إِلَّا أَعَانِي اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فَأَسْلَمْ فَلَا يَأْمُرُنِي إِلَّا بِخَيْرٍ That's the hadith which is a sahih Muslim. What the Prophet وسلم, said, There's none of you except that he has a qareen. He has someone from the shayateen or from the jinn that was paired or coupled up with him. Meaning that he was tempting him to do something or tempting her to do something evil. He said, مَا مَنْ كُمْ مِنْ أَحَدْ إِلَّا وَلَهُ قَرِينَ It's not any from amongst you except you have a qareen. He says, even you are messenger of Allah, he said, me, إِلَّا أَعَانِيَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فَأَسْلَمْ وَلَا يَأْمُرُنِي إِلَّا بِخَيْرٍ he said, except that Allah aided me upon him, and he became Muslim. For Aslam. He became Muslim, and he does not command me except good. He does not command me except what? Good. So the person who, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as it clearly says in this explanation, that the message of Allah is the only one who what? Knows that his jinn or the one in which was, he was paired or coupled up with, actually became what? Muslim. And no one from the people right, in these days and times know if, so, if their so-called jinn or what have you became Muslim 
Because we know also likewise the shayateen or the jinn, they can lie, just like human beings. Just as human beings tell the truth and human beings can lie, the jinn do the same thing. The jinn that will, can tell the truth and some of them can also what? They can lie. Say that they're Muslim, but in actuality it's a what? It's a kafir. You understand what I'm saying, everyone? So it's not befitting that a person now try to what? Involve himself in these affairs. But you'll find that Ibn Uthaymin, he did mention this. He said that, the, just, just the side point, don't write this down. He said, لَيْسَتْ إِتِّفَاقِيَ بَيْنَ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ Al-Imam al baghawi said, it's something of what a person might predict of a, in the future or the past, especially if something became stolen or lost. That means it happened in the past. So for example, you go to now a certain individual or a certain person, and you'll say, do you have such and such jinn? Find what was lost or stolen from me. As this happened in the past with some of the salaf, that they utilized the jinn for this purpose. Even though, like we said, Ahl Ilm say that one should totally abstain from this type of what? This type of act. A person does not know whether or not that person or that jinn is a shaitan or a liar or what have you. You do not know. But you'll find that Ahl Ilm may say it's not ittifaqi, it's not agreed upon. Between Ahl Ilm, because he said, based upon the athar of what took place during the salaf, he said that they, in certain predicament or certain situations, they did use jinn. For, for what? A specific pur- a purpose. But in these days and times, like we said, they should not, this act should be avoided at all costs. Because no one knows what they have or what that jinn is or what that jinn is upon. It could be of kufr or disbelief or the jinn, a lot of the yufan, from them who are liars and from them who are believers. But no one knows. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Tayyip. Notice in the narration of your books, it says, everyone, I wanted to talk about the story, but I, I don't want to get into too much detail. The story of, oh, excuse me, the kahin is the one who informs about affairs of the unseen in the, in the future. That's also correct. Five. Also from the affairs of the unseen is a person that says, what have, read my mind. I want you to read what is inside of my mind. To the end of it. So all these matters, like we said, ya ma'ash al-ikhwa, all of them are, Impermissible just to sum up and keep it concise so we don't want to lose anyone. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Yeah. To lead the statement of what Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah mentions, Abu Al Abbas. Read it for me. Read it for me, uh, Jamar. Mm hmm. Munajim. From the word Najim. Najim, like the stars. Munajim. Excuse me. Al Ramal. Al Ramal. Mm hmm. Keep going. Mm hmm. Jayin. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah rahimahullah whose kunya was Abu al-Abbas. That was his kunya. Even though Abu al-Abbas, Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah, his name was Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim. Ibn Abdul Salam ibn Taymiyyah. That was his real name. Ahmed. So Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah's real name was Ahmed. So if you want to remember his, like Imam Ahmed, Shaykh al Islam name is also Ahmed. Just like your name is Ahmed. طيب أحمد بن عبد الحليم ابن عبد السلام الحراني الدمشقي ابن تيمية. I'll say it again. أحمد بن عبد الحليم شيخ الإسلام تيمية. His real name is Ahmed ابن عبد الحليم ابن عبد السلام ابن عبد السلام ابن عبد السلام ابن. You could say Majd, but just keep it. ابن تيمية. Just put ابن تيمية. Ibn Abdul Salam Ibn Taymiyyah Al-Harrani Al-Dimashqi Al-Harrani Al-Dimashqi From Damascus From Damascus Where's Damascus at everyone? Syria Damascus is in Syria
So Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah, even though he had a kunya, that does not mean that he has a child, that he had a child. That was just a kunya. Certain people take on a kunya, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have a what? A child. As a kunya can be used for other things, that does not necessarily mean that what? That that person has a specific what? Child by that name. This is an example of it. His name was Abu Abbas, even though Shaykh al-Islam never married. As we know, Shaykh al-Islam never married. Shaykh al-Islam... Oh, they don't work. Oh, I thought, I thought it was women over there. It's women. What's? No, somebody's doing work. Okay. No, let me just leave it. طيب. So it says, as we know, Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah did not marry. And he didn't leave it off from being so-called, as they say, from the monk practices of monks or in a monastery. What they call Rahbaniya. But however, you'll find that he was busy with scholastic based scholastic based what jihad. Meaning fighting in the cause of Allah to establish the spread of the correct belief. Even though he did fight in jihad with the sword. He did. Rahimahullah. But you'll find that he was so busy with trying to establish and spread the truth of the correct belief. That he was so busy with it that he did not have the chance to what? To marry. And even if your father Ahl Ilm say that if he felt, felt that there was a fitna on him, he would have become married. He would have married. Especially if he it was a strong desire or his desires might overcome him, that he would have married. Rahimahullah. But Shaykh al Islam, like we said, Ikhwah, he did not marry, not because he left it off at a what they call priesthood or the from the so-called practices of monks who introvert themselves in, in, in monasteries. But he just did it because he was what busy with scholastic knowledge-based jihad. That's it. But his name was Abu al-Abbas, which does not mean that he what, has a son by that name. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Is it clear? Jiyan. So Shaykh al-Islam said what, everyone? What did he say that the meaning of al-Araf is? He said that it's a a kahin, the one who predicts. Now notice he says also, what's pertaining to these people, a munajim, an astrologer. An astrologer, or the one who practices astronomy, or an astrologer. Astrologer. Meaning those who believe in a zodiac sign, and utilize the zodiac signs to predict of certain things happening. So it says munajim. And what they call a ramal the one who utilizes dirt to draw on them or in the sand. Using types of steps and drawing it in the dirt. Doesn't matter what it's done with the feet or with sticks or with rocks. If anyone does this and they claim that such certain events are going to take place, it falls under what we're speaking about. He says, from those who speak about these affairs by these methods. Bihadi turuq by these methods. So it is intended that everyone who claims to have knowledge by what we're mentioning of affairs of the unseen all falls under what is a person called a kahin. Wa imma musharik lahu fil ma'na fi yulhaq bihi. Wa dhalika anna isabat al mukhbir bi ba'd al umur al ghaiba fi ba'd al ahyan. Yakunu kal kashf to the end of it. It gives them a little bit more details. But inshallah, I think that the point is clear. And this is something that we said. And I don't want to get too much detail. There is a little bit more, but we'll suffice with this, inshallah. Taib. Is the next part as it says, everyone. Qalibun Abbas fi qawmin yaktubun abajad. Wa yanzuruna fin nujum. Taib. Now, this is what we wanted to explain, the next part. Notice that it says, what everyone? He says, of those, what was mentioned upon Ibn Abbas, about a people, they used to write, which is called Abajad. How do they translate in your books? How do they write it, uh, Jamar? They write Abu Jad or Abajad. What? 
What does it say? Let me see you. Numerology. Abajad is numerology. That's what it says right there. Regarding the people who practice numerology and utilize the zodiac. One who does this that will not find no good for himself with Allah. That's it. Now, that's it. Numerology. That's it. Type. The, huh? no, no. Alphabet. Yes. And when we explain it, break it down, it does. It has some connection with that. Just listen. Type. So now we're speaking about is what, everyone? Numerology. What we're speaking about now is numerology. What Ibn Abbas mentioned it says here. So Qad Ibn Abbas fi qawmin yaktubun abajad wa yanzuruna fi nujum. مَا أَرَى مَنْ فَعْلَ ذَلِكَ لَهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ To the end of it. Ibn Abbas said he's talking about a people who write Abajad. Abajad. And they look amongst the stars. What did he say about them? It says, مَا أَرَى مَنْ فَعْلَ ذَلِكَ لَهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ He said that I do not, I see that the one who does that, they do not have anything apportioned with Allah. Meaning of the hereafter. Type is this meant in all cases, or is this meant? Or is there an exception to this? You'll find that the great Imam, my my father, who I'm proud to say is my father from my fathers, Sheikh Fadilat Al Walid, Sheikh Ubaid, Hafizullah Ura, Sheikh Ubaid Al Jabi. Did he mention about this? He said, he said that the meaning of Abu Jad that it breaks down to two types. You have numerology. He said that is impermissible. Numerology that's impermissible. Numerology that's per- impermissible. For example, if I can write this down, where they say that based upon certain numbers, they look at it and they predict that certain things are going to take place based upon that number, or how they're arranged, or how they or the arrangement of the numbers. Because it says clearly in the narration, what do they do, everyone? They look amongst the stars. And then they try to make the connection. Based upon the number, or based upon the star, predicting certain affairs from taking place. All that is what? Impermissible. And that is what the meaning is, that a person that partakes in that will not have any portion with Allah in the hereafter, whatsoever. That's called Abu Jad. There's another type of, of Abu Jad that during the time, and it's still used to this day, and you'll find that even some of Al Ilm use it, which is kind of like a code. Like a code. Like, you know, for example, like in, even back in the day, you ever remember, I think maybe about 30, 40 years ago, people would like press certain things, like when they f- like, like a press certain amount of times on a button, it would mean A, or a certain amount of times that would be B. Similar to that, you understand? You ever, I remember, I remember, I remember <laughs> like, like exactly, I sent like Morse code. Remember, as some people, some of you guys probably don't remember this. You guys don't, not Morse, Morse code. Like one beep would mean A, or one beep, two beeps would mean like C, or maybe not, exactly for like some type of communication. Something similar to that. You'll find that even with Ahl Ilm, they used to write letters in certain ways, but it would mean like a code in, in, in like if you was able to understand the language. But it had nothing pertaining to the unseen. Like if you utilize the Morse code, is it talking about the unseen? No, you're just trying to communicate. Is it kind of understood what I'm saying, everyone? Huh? That was the type of another use of Abu Jad. It's still used to this day. Even Sheikh, Sheikh Rubey even mentioned it. And the sharh. For example, I'm going to give a good example. Even Sheikh Uthami says the exact same thing. For example, he says, He says, a person who uses it in order, for example, to, cal- to calculate or count, for example, sentences or anything similar to that. He says, He says, he said, even to this day, this type of what we're speaking about, it's nothing wrong with it. He said, even the ulama 
from the past who are considered historians, historians or theologians, that they used to use this. For example, he said, Ma Sheikh, Sha'ir Thaymi, Sheikh, who is Sheikh Abdul Rahman Sa'adi. He says, You'll find that in some poetry, he said he will write the date of when a masjid was built in some type of poetry. And he will put it in the poetry form with the letters, but people who understood the code will not understand, uh, understand that he's talking about a certain date, even though he wrote it in a letter form. It's kind of similar to what I just said about Morse code, but it's kind of used in another way. You understand what I'm kind of, you get the point kind of everyone, what I'm trying to say? Huh? Does someone understand, you understand Bilal? You don't know what Morse code is. Back in the day, they, when we used to have certain walkie-talkies, back in the day, maybe about probably in the 70s, maybe the 60s, and people even maybe go back, maybe returns or more earlier than that. We used to have little buttons that we would just have one button, and if you press it a certain amount of times, it would mean A. Or, or excuse me, one time mean A. Or twice would be B. Three times maybe C. In certain sentences, in certain times, you can even write sentences based upon certain how many beeps you would use. It was a type of language, but it's not a language, but it's like a code. You don't understand. People who return from from the time of old understand what I'm talking about, huh? I explain it to them later. Taib. <laughs> For example, even Sheikh Abdul Rahman Saadi mentioned it said is a poetry that he wrote. The Sheikh Uthaymi even mentioned, he said, Jadda bil rida wa'idu al mina, man sa'adu fi dal bina, tari huhu hina taha, kaulu al munibi gfir lana, wa shahru fi shawalin, ya, rabbi taqabbal sa'yana. <laughs> he said this poetry. Sheikh Uthaymi said, when, he, when Sheikh Sa'adi said in this poetry, Ighfir lana, O oh Allah, forgive us. He said we would count it based upon the sentences where based upon the fact if you understood it, it would mean the date of the year 1,362 for those who understood the code of how many uh, sentences would be counted. You understand where I'm coming from, everyone? Is it clear what I'm saying, kind of? He said this usage of Abu Jad is permissible. It's nothing wrong with that. It has nothing to do with the unseen. It's like just a form of communication or form of trying to tell you something with maybe even trying to sum it up and saving you time if you understood the code of what was being what? What was being disseminated to you. Is it understood what I'm saying? So if you'll find that even the shuruh of Ahl Ilm and the explanations, this is what they mentioned, that this type of Abu Jad is permissible. It's nothing wrong there. It has nothing to do with the unseen. It's like almost like, if you want to say for lack of better words, a code or a message that's used. And if you understood the language, you will understand that it means this amount of numbers. A person will use a letter, and then the num uh, numbers will be understood from these letters that are used. Or it, could be the, or it could be vice versa. You understand? So he said that this type of usage of Abu Jad, this is permissible. This is what? Permissible. So is all usage of Abu Jad impermissible, everyone? We said no. The only one is what? Is what was pertaining to what, everyone? Not the Morse code. <laughs> was pertaining to numerology. Looking amongst the stars and predicting certain events from occur of occurring or taking place. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? طيب. So notice in the narration it says ما أرى من فاعل ذلك له عند الله من خلق. He said, I do not see that the one who does that they, they will have any portion with Allah. So you find that Ibn Abbas based upon what he's saying here would necessitate well everyone this is disbelief. So it's a clear indication that numerology is what? It's impermissible. The, the type we're speaking about of looking amongst the stars. He will not have no portion. He says, إذ لا ينفي النصي مطلقا عن أحد من المؤمنين وإن كان له ذنوب عذب بقدر ذنوبه أو تجاوز الله عنها ثم صار آخر أمره إلى نصيبه الذي يجده عند الله. طيب. So that's exactly what Ibn Abbas. That would necessitate that a person is left to fold of Islam 
Because a person's portion is not negated in all cases, except from a person who's, who's a mu'min, and then the iman was what? Removed. But as we know in, in regards to sins, based upon what type, then a person could be punished according to, to the level or the magnitude of the evil that they've done. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could what? Overlook them. And the final affair of him or her, or their portion could be what they will find with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. However, numerology and the people who predict certain affairs that takes place in individuals' lives, this is a type of disbelief that would nullify Islam. Because like we said, talking about affairs that will take place, all of that is connected with the rububi of Allah. All that is connected with what everyone? The, the lordship of Allah. So those affairs are very what? Sacred and very what? Dangerous, especially if one claims to have some that he shares in, in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those type of matters, or he shares some type of portion with Allah in that type of matter. طيب. So now let's flip the page. We almost finished, Alhamdulillah, we almost finished that part. I read the Masail for me, everyone. Someone read the, the first one. Say it again. Jayin. It says that the person believing a Kahin would never gather with faith. By the Qur'an, meaning by the Nas, by what the Qur'an informs us. Which is true, meaning that one predicting the future or involving inside of affairs that he claims or predicts that will nullify one's or her Islam. That's an act of what? Disbelief. What ayahs in the book of Allah to be with the Allah establishes this fact? We already talked about that. Due to the fact that if you look at this masala, the first one, it says that kahin, that the one who believes him or believing in him, it does not gather with the person who truly has faith by the Qur'an. طيب, that's based upon what everyone? In the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in the first part of the chapter. Look to the evidence. What does it say? Jayin. Whoever goes to these people and believes what they say, they have what? Disbelief has been revealed to Muhammad. Taib, that's for the person who, dis- who believes the what? Kahin. That's the evidence for it. Is it clear? Is it clear? He's just saying it's clear just to keep us moving. Huh? Taib. Next one, the next masala. Huh? Tafadl. Say it again. The second, number two. I have a different book. Oh, okay. The clarification that is disbelief. That's for the person who goes to him. What about the person who actually does the predictions? We just mentioned that. That's for the person who goes to him and, and acts and believes what he says and accepts it and applies it. What about the person who's actually issuing these type, this type of news to the people? His portion or his sin is, and his magnet, the magnitude of his sin is what? Worse. Right, everyone? His sin is on, is on a whole nother level. Play. Number three. The mention of the one who has his fortune told and the one who has it done for. Where's that... Took an, or what is that derived from, everyone? What is that extracted from? Which, which hadith? Ahsan. Hadith Imran ibn Hussein. The Prophet said he is not from us. Jayyid. Next one. Number four. The one who 
the mention of one who has an omen done for him. I think that's extracted from the same what? The same? Same hadith. Tight, number five. I said four? Huh? It's only four? It should go up to six. Seven. It should go up to seven. The mention of one who also likewise asks for a spell to be done for him. Same thing. It applies to the hadith. The Prophet says he is not from us. He's not from us. So you see the beauty of Al Islam, how Islam prohibits all these matters. I don't see how people cannot read these narrations and see how this religion, how perfect it is, and how detailed it is, and so many in so many affairs, prohibiting, for example, in Intoxicants, consuming intoxicants, consuming, for example, or stealing, or lying, or cheating, or partaking in magic, or involving one in claiming to have knowledge of the unseen. All these matters are truly considered corruption in this world, and corruption in the earth, and what has caused the earth to be what it is now. And where so much affairs that are chaotic that are taking place all around, it's considered on a global scale, right everyone? All around the earth is chaos, everywhere. Majority of the countries, if not all the lands, are all some type of state. They're facing some type of chaos in their particular land. Or some type of, uh, of mishaps of what we see taking place. Or afflictions in which the people are being tested by. We see it everywhere now. It's global. All because of what? All because of corruptive acts that are done by the hands of the people. And by them rejecting what would be considered a solution to the problem. Tayyib. And the best solution to the problem is what we're reading right now. Tayyib. So the one who was mentioned, it says about these hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ said that he set himself free from all these individuals. So magicians, people who predict, also the people who believes in omens, that has it done for them, or ones who do it for them. All of the message of Allah ﷺ prohibited that not only that the person do it, but also that the person seek to have it done for them. Type the six. The mention of the one. Now, do you see the fiqh? Now, if you ponder on what Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab mentioned here, ponder on it. The one, Man ta'allama Abba Jad. The mentioning of the one of what? Of learning Abba Jad. It's as if he's saying there is from Abu Jad that is permissible. He said, Abu Jah wa ta'ala madharik fihi tafseel. La yuhmadu wa la yudham. Illa ala hisab al hala lati tunazzalu alayha. Wa qad sabaka dhalik. The affair of Abu Jad, we already talked about, discussed that it what? That these affairs from them that are what? Permissible and from them that are what? Not. Dependent on the, de- the, te- the details that we what? Gave. But numerology. Especially if it's in regards to predicting certain matters using numbers, then that is what we're speaking about, which is impermissible. But as far as what's considered like codes of what a person will understand of, of trying to count certain sentences, and it's like kind of like I said, it's like a code. That type of Abu, what they call uh, Abjadiya, what's called Abjadiya, is permissible. And like we said, it's still utilized to this day. Number seven. Jayyid. That's where we're going to end it off right there, inshallah. We'll just mention this and then we'll stop. Where's the other one I just had? Just to bring some details, in the affairs of the stars, as we know everyone, that it breaks down into different categories. That this, the stars, if they're used by their movements, meaning the movements of the stars and how they move and the positions they're in and they utilize for what takes place on this earth doesn't matter whether specific or, or general then we know that that generally is what? polytheism so I'll keep it, I'm going to keep it simple and write this down if you understood this point then you understood the whole chapter so the usage of the stars 
if it's utilized by its movements or positions upon what will take place on this earth, Suhail, whether it be in your life or events that takes place on the earth, this is polytheism. It's polytheism, shirk. It's shirk, it's polytheism. That the stars, if it's used as an evidence, if it's used as an evidence, how they move, how they're positioned upon what takes place in this world. It doesn't matter whether it's what? Specific or general. What do we mean specific or general? Specific mean in, in your life specific. In your, your life. You as the person himself. Or generally. Generally meaning what's, what's concerning everyone. For example, uh, what takes place of, uh, what do you call it? A drought. Or what they call uh, a famine. Or what have you. A drought or famine. That's general. Like, if the stars are utilized for this, then this is considered what, everyone? Shirk. It's considered polytheism. And if a person believes that these stars, they're the administrator of these affairs, or that Allah, or that they have a partner, this type of disbelief removes you from the fold of Islam. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? This will nullify your Islam. Type, what if you just believe that they're just the reason? But ultimately, you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that what? Administrates. But you just say, oh, it's a reason. Jayid. Doesn't take you out the fold of Islam, but it's, however, it's still called kufr. Still called kufr. And it's still called shirk. It's still called polytheism. Similar to what we know is what everyone? Similar to what we know in the statements? MashaAllah was shit. Whatever Allah wills and you will. The statement, whatever Allah wills and you will, we're going to speak about, don't worry, it's going to come. If you believe that that person is equal with Allah, that removes you from the fold of Islam. If you believe that the statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, is the main, rather he's the only one that has total dominant and control by other, but however in your statement it was what? It was wrong, that's minor shirk. Because the statement is still what? Incorrect. So it's minor shirk. So if you say, MashaAllah, wa shit, whatever Allah wills and you will, if that person believes that Allah ta'ala is the one who's the exclusive one, who what? Administrates the affairs, then, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. The person who they swore by or the person who they say that they're equal along with Allah based upon the statement, that they're totally 100% equal with Allah, that nullifies your slant completely. If they just believe it's just a statement, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's totally dominant, that's minus shirk. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Sure. Same to here, same thing applies. Same thing applies. You alright with your coat? You want me to turn the heater? No. Are you too high? Are you high? Yeah. <laughs> alright, what's about, about to stop? What the Prophet said, Ahal tadruna madha qadra rabbukum? Qalu, Allahu rasuluhu a'lam. Qala asbaha min ibadi mu'min bi wa kafir. Turn on the narration. That's going to come, inshallah. طيب. So these are the details that we gave before. طيب. What do we say about this chapter? That if a, Let's just say if a person learns the position of the stars in the moon for specific times of the year, like for seasons. Is that permissible or is it haram? It's haram? It's, it's unlawful? It's permissible. We said it is permissible. They want to know the time of the certain seasons, when it's, when it's the best time to plant or to start now. Uh, times when they're supposed to now perform their harvest for their crops, what have you. Just based upon the know what's the time. That's it. 
Not to predict, just knowing what the time is. Is that, is that permissible or not? That is permissible. Type. Another type, for example, you want to know when's the times for the prayers? Haram permissible? It's permissible. Jay. So the only thing we're talking about is what's pertaining to what? Predictions. That is what we're speaking about. And those are the affairs that we what? We're talking about. Tayyip. There is a difference between a kahin and a raf. We already talked about that. I don't think we need to repeat it again. Tayyip, we'll stop here. We'll next do the next chapter about Nushra, next class. We'll stop here. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyu Muhammad wa ala adhi wa sahbihi. Subhanaka Allahum fi hamdak. Ashanu la ilaha illa anta istaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Ah. Uh, question. Mm-hmm.